Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review or end of day review of the European markets for Friday the 19th of August. Uh, for the uh, European markets, please be sure to visit Trade Signaler, tradesignaler.com. Signals and market updates from leading providers. You can download the app from the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, in terms of uh, market reaction and market close, European markets overwhelmingly in the red. FTSE down 10 points, the DAX down 50 odd, the CAC certainly down 30 points, so more or less anywhere between 0.2 to 0.8% sell off across the board. The European markets certainly uh, ignored the uh, strength, or should we say flat more or less, uh, the Hang Seng negative, the Hang Seng high positive, well, more or less, certainly flat. And the Nikkei certainly thrusted higher by up by, by up by 60 or 70 odd points as uh, the $100 handle certainly saves the day. Now, uh, the, the the actual theme in Europe really was one of a stronger euro. A stronger euro obviously indicates uh, exports lower and therefore exports get potentially hit and therefore it's considered to be negative. We've had uh, the producer price index out of Germany on a month-on-month -month basis coming in slightly stronger which kept the euro afloat okay and obviously yesterday's comments with regards to the ECB saying that they were in a wait and see mode and observing additional data obviously with the uh, FOMC as well in, in a wait and see mode again awaiting further data uh, the euro certainly has caught a bid okay on the expectation that the uh, FOMC or the FED will potentially stay on, on pause or hold uh, this year and therefore the euro is getting bid higher and again, that's negating the effects of QE from uh, from the uh, ECB. Uh, same situation uh, obviously arises with regards to the uh, the USD JPY. Uh, again, we're back at 100, and again, uh, a lot of the work has been negated. So a lot of central banks have certainly um, uh, stood still uh, in anticipation of a potential rate hike from the US, and they certainly are not uh, playing ball. Okay, so again, a lot of uh, central banks have been left confused dazed and really at the uh, the mercy of the uh, the FOMC okay and again they this certainly seems uh, even more confused than anybody else as to uh, the next potential uh, move and so many contradictory statements etc uh, and again it's very hard to decipher exactly what their position is hence a lot of these hedge funds are suffering i mean we have Paul Tudor Jones again certainly um, racking up massive losses Carl Icahn etc all of these uh, so-called uh, trading gurus all certainly uh, getting hurt with regards to uh, misunderstanding the uh, central bank's policy. Okay, so let's get on back onto the um, the uh, European indices. Uh, again, no, no real major news today, uh, other than the fact that obviously we had this uh, inflation data from Germany and really reinforcing the strength of the euro. Okay, so again, certainly no real um, I uh, no real uh, signal or direction. And again, European markets really on the theme, on the theme that a stronger euro obviously hurts exports, and that's why we had this uh, weakness. Now, if you look at the uh, German DAX, you can see that we are now potentially attempting to build a base here, building a base around the 10-500 zone. We, we failed to dip below that. Okay, you certainly had a bear flag formation, and that certainly played out before we actually bounced towards a close. If you look at the 10-minute chart, we did actually dip below. So again, that certainly is something worth uh, observing. So again. We did actually make a new low today, but then we subsequently bounced. So, again, all eyes will be on this uh, diagonal trend line. So, again, you're looking at a falling contracting wedge type pattern. Again, looking for a potential breakout here, folks. Okay. Uh, you have resistance at the uh, 10,630. Okay. In terms of the German DAX. And the German DAX has certainly stopped uh, its uh, fall. That certainly is uh, true. Okay. So, again, keep an eye out and as to the next potential move there. Going to a 60 minute chart here. You certainly had a bearish continuation pattern. We held pivot S3, okay, on the daily chart, the German DAX as well. You've got this diagonal trend line that certainly is holding for now. And again, holding previous resistance equals support. So again, keep an eye on that, okay? German DAX does have an unfilled gap at 10,360. If the euro continues to appreciate or continues to go higher, then you are going to see further trouble in, in, in the German DAX. Now, we did have a report out today with regards to the German DAX of uh, domestic growth certainly remaining strong. So again, that certainly did help the German DAX to a large extent. But again, certainly keep and observe, uh, certainly observe the next direction. If we do obviously go ahead and make a new low and dip below 10,500, then the bears are certainly in control. If we hold at 10,500 level, then you are looking at the bulls certainly uh, gaining some strength here and testing the 10,600 and higher level. Okay. 
In terms of the French CAC now, let's bring up the French CAC, the next potential indices. Go to the daily chart first and foremost. Okay, so again, a uh, potential bottoming tail on the daily chart. So certainly an argument here for a potential reversal. Now, one of the reasons for that argument is the fact that the Euro USD, if you go to the daily chart, has certainly held resistance. Okay, if the Euro can hold its resistance here and start to reverse, then you are going to see a, a risk being embraced. Okay, so certainly looking at risk being embraced, a four hour chart as well. Keep an eye on this in terms of its higher highs and higher lows and whether or not we can break that structure. Okay, uh, again, going back to the French CAC now. Okay, so daily chart potential uh, bottoming tail, 60 minute chart, certainly uh, holding pivot S3, previous resistance equals support, certainly attempting to bounce back. So again, keep an eye on there, taking the pivot highs, not really a, a, adhering to technicals from now for now in terms of its diagonal trend line okay so you certainly have a pattern of uh, lower lows lower highs and uh, certainly is being questioned at the moment so if i take the pivot high from here connect it to the next pivot low pivot high you can't unfortunately there's no real diagonal no real trend line that certainly can be discerned for now okay other than the fact that you have this small mini trend line so again certainly an argument for an inverted head and shoulder certainly remains strong you failed, you made a lower low, but you haven't made a lower high, okay? You made a higher high, so again, looking for a higher low, and then looking for a reversal on the French CAC. You do have an unfilled gap at 4.455. We have had stronger employment data this week out of France, so that certainly keeps it bid, okay? In terms of the uh, FTSE 100, now let's see exactly what's happening with the FTSE. The FTSE really is influenced heavily by oil, okay? The concept of higher highs and higher lows certainly remains intact. We certainly are, uh, cons uh, I mean, from a uh, just purely from a technical basis, so you can certainly argue for the FTSE 100 that higher highs and higher lows remains intact. Okay, you have put a potential bottoming tail there on the daily chart. Looking at the 60 minute chart, you can certainly see that uh, we're holding this uh, key support here, which is very impressive around the uh, 10, oh, so you say 6850 zone. Okay, 6850 zone. And then again, looking to potentially reverse. Okay. So certainly held a 6850 zone. So again, in this bearish channel, whether we can break out the bearish channel and then att attempt to attack that 6900 level again, certainly is on the card, especially with the uh, the price of oil. If I bring up the price of oil for you folks, you can see on the daily chart, the next real resistance in oil at the moment is around 51. And obviously talk of this OPEC meeting, etc. is certainly keeping oil alive. So again, certainly a strong argument for oil to continue higher, especially with the dollar obviously moving lower. Although in the last two days, excuse me, although the last two days you have seen dollar strength, still the oil prices are moving higher. We've just had a rig count from the US as well coming stronger, yet still uh, causing oil to move higher. So something is certainly brewing in the background and uh, shorts certainly are capitulating. So again, uh, the um, argument for a higher uh, uh, FTSE uh, obviously added the fact that you have the QE argument, even though we have had stronger economic data for the last two or three days. For the FTSE employment, uh, retail sales, uh, inflation, all indicating higher there, boy, negating any potential further rate cuts on the FTSE 100. And again, uh, obviously adding to the bearish argument, okay? And that certainly still hasn't unfazed, uh, well, certainly hasn't phased the FTSE. Uh, and that, is, again, is impressive, okay? So, again, you have had some weakness <clears throat> due to that, but 6850 is holding with oil prices obviously uh, uh, staying afloat. So, again, argument here for a 6900 attack on the uh, and especially given the fact that the US markets certainly have uh, negated any weakness from the uh, European session, okay? US market still holding the highs, okay? Nasdaq still holding 4800 and no real weakness is uh, so certainly being observed there. So again 4900, 6900 and again 69450 certainly can get attacked on the uh, Monday's trading session. As you can see here we've certainly uh, we did we were holding the uh, support at the 6850. We did dip below to 6842. So just be aware, be aware, obviously aware of that uh, potential here for a double bottom scenario here. Uh, and again, the, the argument can be made for an inverted head and shoulders formation as well. So certainly keep all that in mind for Monday's trading session, really, uh, from my perspective. But FTSE certainly has shown strength today, especially with the European markets week. FTSE certainly was the uh, uh, one that's shown, okay? So again, keep an eye on the FTSE in terms of its next direction. Really, it's all about the 60 minute chart from my perspective. And uh, if we hold a 6850, then you are looking at 6900 next, okay? For the uh, FTSE 100. Okay, now the Euro stocks last uh, indices to observe. 
Here we go. Okay, so let's go to the daily chart first and foremost. Okay, so daily chart, certainly a bottoming tail has been put in. Uh, if you look at the uh, the actual technical pattern, Fib, Fib 61, 75% held. So again, that's indicating to you that uh, the euro certainly is about to come off, okay? Given the fact that there's an inverse relationship with the euro and obviously European equities, okay? So again, looking at uh, potential support here, horizontal, there's certainly some support in this region. We've hit the pivot S3 as well, okay? And you do have an unfilled gap above. So let's see if we can uh, adhere to the diagonal trend line. So, mm, I mean, it's not really obedient, so let's just ignore it for now. Okay, you certainly have uh, previous support equals resistance here. Okay, so looking to see if we can break this uh, downward uh, path. Uh, and really, that's the diagonal trend line that we have at the moment. We have this uh, falling uh, bearish channel. Okay, but again, certainly an impressive bounce from the uh, 2950 zone up to the 2970 zone. So an impressive bounce there on the euro stocks. And again, looking for a potential uh, reversal pattern forming, provided we can see the uh, euro starting to fall. So I think a lot of it will be dependent upon the euro. Okay, so again, from my perspective, just keep an eye out for a potential inverted head and shoulders formation. Whether you're looking for a left shoulder and then a head, looking for some uh, retracement and then obviously starting to look for a rally. Okay, so from my perspective, uh, going into Monday's trading session, I'm going to be very cautious with shorting the Euro, uh, European equities provided the euro starts to fall. If the euro starts to move higher, then obviously I'm happy to short. If the euro starts to fall, okay, then you can certainly expect a, uh, a rally in European equities. That's my uh, understanding. So certainly, if the, given the fact that the US markets, if I bring up the US markets for you uh, as well, you can see that the strength still resumes there. If I look at the NASDAQ, you can see the NASDAQ certainly uh, strength resuming. We have a pivot low of 4786, but then the market subsequently rallied quite substantially. So impressive, okay, very, very impressive. Uh, and again, looking like it wants to attack the 4825 gap fill above and then obviously start to uh, potentially mount a new rally to new highs. So again, certainly something to consider, folks, okay, certainly something to consider for the, uh, the actual NASDAQ. Again, if we get more bearish news, Okay, uh, if oil prices start to fall, euro starts to spike, USDJPY below goes down to 9900, then you are looking at uh, that gap fill failing, and then obviously the gap fill at 4745, and then I'll have to switch my bias to bearish. So I'm happy either way, okay? I don't have any inherent um, natural born bias. I mean, it's just whatever the market tells me, okay? Uh, it's a good week this week, thank God, okay? So we had a normal market, at last bulls and bears both making money, and uh, certainly. Uh, prosper this week with 255 points so that's certainly good news no arguments there in terms of the returns but again it's, it's it's about being flexible okay being flexible in the market as you can see in the s p 500 still consolidating above the highs so any individual would certainly have a bullish bias given the fact that we're breaking down to new highs but there's no real conviction and no real conviction from my perspective and fundamentals certainly aren't confirming it either okay so again you've got the battle of the gaps on the s p 500 you've got 2190 and then you got 2163 which one wins okay Oh, that's the uh, question. Okay, so which one wins? Bulls certainly buying the dips. Excuse me. Bulls certainly buying the dips, okay? And uh, bears certainly selling the rips as well. So this is a healthy market. Uh, bulls and bears both fighting out, okay? 10-minute chart. Still making a lower high, okay? Holding that 75% resistance. So certainly holding that high. Certainly holding the uh, resistance low, okay? So again, looking for a, uh, a weakness, and again, if we fail, if we actually move higher and close that gap at 2187, very, very bullish for European equities, okay? Very, very bullish. Again, it's all about the euro and yen, really, I think, from my perspective. Each day, look how the Asian markets are trading, look at the euro and yen, then obviously decide accordingly. Okay, I think that's a wrap in terms of uh, the analysis going into the weekend, end of day for Friday. Please, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of that 25% bonus. And as always, you can join my live analysis service. Please be visit. Please be sure to uh, uh, visit my website www.inter-market-analysis.com. Click on the um, live analysis service to see how it operates. Click on the free trial, free trial, uh, a tab to understand exactly um, understand exactly what the uh, the market is. Uh, well, basically, how to take advantage of the uh, the uh, one month uh, free trial. And what you need to do, all you need to do is email me, daytrader at inter-market-analysis.com. And uh, I'll certainly add you on to the WhatsApp group, folks, okay? Certainly add you to the WhatsApp group, and you can certainly join me in my live trading room, short as to speak, okay? 
or should we say live trading whatsapp group okay where i post my trades analysis uh, and commentary throughout the day on that note like i said please be sure to visit cfds.com take advantage of the 25 percent bonus and i wish you all